Chapter 6 Fundamental Rights and Duties In the previous chapter, we studied how the Constitution of India was written. We also studied the main objectives of the Constitution. One way of ensuring that the objectives are achieved is to guarantee fundamental rights to the citizens. In this chapter, we shall study the rights included in the Constitution and why they are important. Introduction Today, most countries, through their constitutions, grant rights to the citizens. The aim of such rights is to help in the all-round development of the people. Rights are necessary also for strengthening democracy. The fundamental rights, therefore, constitute a very important part of a constitution. I thought that uprisings in Tunisia or Egypt took place because those governments did not accept people's rights. A. What is a right? When we say that a person has a right, we mean that the person can engage in a certain act and that others accept that behavior. Having a right also means that the person can expect specific behavior from other persons and from the government. Thus, rights can come into being only when other members of society and the government accept certain obligations. You must have seen that there is a silence zone near hospitals. This is a regulation local authorities declare that you cannot blow horns while passing through the silence zone. This regulation comes in the backdrop of a socially accepted idea that patients in the hospital need silence and that they are entitled to rest and recuperation in peace. Thus, the patient's claim to rest is accepted by society and then a regulation is made to enforce that claim. Society accepts various such claims mainly when they are seen as reasonable. In other words, rights require in the first place an agreement among members of the society over what are reasonable claims of its members. Then it also requires legal provisions for ensuring the rights. Such legal provisions include limits on the powers of the government. As you will learn later in Standard 10th, limits on the powers of government are seen as an important component of democracy. By agreeing to have limits on the government, a society ensures democratic government. When there are no limitations on government's powers, there is no democracy. I had heard of this word democracy, but did not know that it was related to rights. Must find out the rights of people in different democracies. When we say that we have freedom of speech, it means that other people around us also have the same right and we all agree that we can freely express our opinions. Then, there must also be legal provisions for protecting the freedom of speech. There must be provision that police or any other government officers cannot unnecessarily restrict our right to express our views. In this sense, rights imply limitations on the powers of the government. By granting rights to citizens, governments agree to limit their powers. Read newspapers of one week. List the new items that are against the government or critical of the government or some leaders. What would happen if the government said that you cannot publish any news that is against the government or cannot publish news items that criticize the government? By allowing publication of news opposed to it, the government accepts certain limitations. This is also known as freedom of the press. This freedom is part of a freedom of speech.
but granting these rights was not an easy or straightforward process. In many countries, people engaged in struggles with their rulers for long periods before they could get their rights. When the Constitution of the United States was written in 1787, the idea of rights also existed. But that Constitution originally did not mention any rights because makers of that Constitution felt that rights are already there and do not need mention in the Constitution. But on the demands of citizens, a Bill of Rights was subsequently included in the U.S. Constitution, that is, in 1791. Since that time, it has become customary to include rights in the constitution of a country. The constitution of India includes a detailed list of rights. These are called fundamental rights. This means that these rights are of fundamental importance. They are so important that the government cannot take away these rights. Long back in 1215, the British monarch had to agree to some restrictions over the monarchical powers. This agreement is famous as the Magna Charta, a charter agreed by the king. Even after this, there were many struggles in England between the people and the monarch. Those struggles resulted into many more limits on the powers of the king or queen. Ultimately, these struggles led to democracy and acceptance of citizens' right. In 1776, the American people declared their independence from England. That declaration is known as the Declaration of Independence, in which it was asserted that certain rights of human beings were inalienable, meaning that nobody could take those rights away. Similarly, the French Revolution of 1789 also underlined the importance of rights through the Declaration of Rights of Man and of the Citizens. The French Revolution led to abolition of the monarchy and the rise of democracy in France. In what way rights are related to democracy? Educational and Cultural Rights India is full of diversity. People in a country speak different languages follow different religions, adopt different cultural practices, and celebrate different festivals. This is possible only when we do not force people to give up their own cultural practices and adopt the culture of the majority. In every part of the country, some cultural or linguistic groups will be in a minority. Do they have to follow the culture of the majority? Freedom means that minorities should be free to adopt and practice their own culture. The Constitution has guaranteed such cultural diversity by protecting educational and cultural rights of minorities. A group belonging to language-based minority or religious minority will have the right to protect its culture and to form educational institutions. B. Are fundamental rights mentioned in Indian Constitution? Even before India became independent, our leaders were aware that a future India must respect rights of citizens and that there must be a guarantee of those rights. When India was under British rule, Motilal Nehru, who was president of an all-party committee, demanded that the government must adopt a Bill of Rights, that is, in 1928. Before Motilal Nehru, Lokmanya Tilak had declared that Swaraj was my birthright. And before Lokmanya Tilak, Mahatma Phule had recognized the importance of education and equality as rights of human beings. These ideas form the origin of our rights today in free India. There is a separate part of the Constitution of India where fundamental rights are mentioned. These fundamental rights include liberty, equality, 
right against exploitation, right to freedom of religion, cultural and educational rights, and right to constitutional remedy. C. Human Rights It is now internationally accepted that every human being has certain rights. These are described as human rights. It is also accepted now that human rights should be adopted and guaranteed by every country and necessary mechanism for protection of human rights should be created. In the year 1948, the United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 10th December 1948. This day is celebrated every year as Human Rights Day. Later, in 1966, the General Assembly of United Nations adopted the International Covenant of Economic, Social and Cultural Rights and many countries have signed that agreement. According to the international norm, India has created the National Human Rights Commission in 1993. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights lists many important rights. These include individual freedoms such as freedom of speech, movement, etc., right to equality, cultural rights, and freedom of religion. Besides this, Declaration also includes wide-ranging rights such as right to work, right to rest and leisure, right to education, etc. The purpose is to ensure a balanced development of every individual and ensuring equal worth of all persons. Dignity and justice for all of us, this is the motto of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Activity Using Internet, find out countries that have adopted the Declaration of Human Rights. For information about the number of countries that have signed the International Covenant, access the UN website. Right to Equality Democratic government means that the government is not arbitrary. It works according to rules and regulations. But what if rules were only applied to some people and not to some others? It would still be an arbitrary government. Therefore, there must be the same rules for everyone. This is the principle of equality before laws. Our constitution guarantees that all persons will be treated equally by the government. Equality means that persons will not be treated differently just because of the gender, religion or caste, etc. Right to equality also means that everyone will get equal opportunities. Remember that there are many inequalities in our society and to remove those inequalities is the objectives of a constitution. Therefore, it is the responsibility of the government not only to treat all persons equally, but to implement policies that will bring equality in our social relations. You may have heard about reservation of seats in school and college admissions for women or persons of weaker sections. This is an example of government's efforts to bring equality. Right to equality does not mean only equal legal treatment. It also means that groups which are backward and traditionally discriminated against must get the opportunity to develop themselves and become equal in the true sense. Thus, right to equality puts a responsibility on the government to remove injustice and inequality. Right to freedom of religion In India, people follow different religious practices, but the government does not support or oppose any religion. 
every person is free to follow any religion and pray according to her or his religion and also propagate their religion. The government will not differentiate between persons of different religions only on ground of their religion. And because there is no religion, which is the official religion of a country, government or government-aided institutions will not force us to follow any particular religious practice. Government also does not itself preach any religion or give religious education in schools aided by it. Right to Information Similarly, the right to information is now enforced, though it is not part of a fundamental rights. Citizens cannot judge the government if they do not have enough information. Therefore, of late, it has been accepted all over the world that democracy means citizens' right to get the information from their government. This is known as the right to information. After the efforts of the senior social activist Anna Hazare and his followers, right to information was passed by the government of India. Right to Liberty Right to life is one of the most important rights of the individual. Our constitution guarantees this right. It means that even the government cannot take away our life or cannot arrest us without reason and without legal procedure. But merely a guarantee of life is not enough. As human beings, we want to live a meaningful life. We want to do things we like. We want to develop our personality, follow our hobbies, pursue our own interests. For this to become a reality, we need an assurance that there won't be unreasonable restrictions on our personal liberties. Freedom of speech is one of the most important personal liberties. Besides, we have the liberty to form associations and organize meetings. We also have the freedom to move freely in different parts of the country and reside anywhere in the country. And we have the freedom to undertake any profession or business of our liking. Right to Constitutional Protection So far we listed the rights guaranteed by the Constitution. But what do we mean by guarantee? If our right is violated, we can go to the government for protection. But what will happen if some officer or the government itself violated or did not respect our rights? In such situation, we have the right to move the courts. This is also called as right to constitutional remedy. Court will decide if the government has wrongly interfered with our rights and if so, ask the government not to do so. Judiciary is the protector of our rights. This provision makes our fundamental rights truly guaranteed. First, what is the importance of right to equality? Second, why is the right to constitutional remedy the most important right? Activity. Imagine we had right to liberty but not the right to equality. What would be the result? Right against exploitation Both liberty and equality will be violated if some people are forced by others to undertake some work against their wishes. Because of poverty, there used to be many people who would take loans from private moneylenders and the moneylenders would then force them to work without payments until the loan and interest are repaid. This practice was known as forced labor or wait. The constitution has declared such practices as illegal. There will be no slavery in any form and nobody will be treated as a bonded labor. Another fallout of poverty is that children from poor families are required to undertake work and earn money. 
As a result, children are sometimes employed in very hard and dangerous jobs, such as the job of making firecrackers. The Constitution has banned such practices because these involve exploitation of children. Children below the age of 14 years of age cannot be employed in hazardous jobs. Positive and Negative Rights Rights are necessary for a personal development. They are necessary also for the well-being of the society. Rights ensure that weaker and backward sections of society get opportunities to improve their condition. The right to equality is very important in this respect. Thus, some rights are limitations or restrictions on the powers of the government, while some rights mandate that the government adopts policies for the well-being of weaker and needy sections. In this sense, rights are responsibility of the government and the society to make sure that various services and facilities reach all sections. So, our rights are twofold. Some rights are restrictions on government, what the government cannot and should not be doing. Let us call them negative rights, because they tell us what the government should not do. On the other hand, some rights tell what the government should do. These are positive rights. Right to education, for instance, is a positive right. On the other hand, freedom of speech is a negative right, meaning that it states that government cannot put unreasonable restrictions on a freedom of speech. Other Rights The idea of rights does not stop only at fundamental rights. For instance, we know that citizens of India enjoy the right to vote. This right is not listed in fundamental rights, but it is part of our constitutional rights. Even after the constitution was written, the scope of our rights has been expanded. For example, we now have the right to education. Under this right, all children between the age of 6 and 14 are entitled to education. Activity Collect the information about right to education. Discuss in your class the importance of right to education.